I'm Steve for This Oak With Cars, and today I have a special guest, Jeff Parada from the Winter Circle. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Want to tell them a little history on the Winter Circle? Uh, Winter Circle is a parts business for sprites and midgets. It's been around 53 years, I believe now. Uh, started by Dave Georgie, who's still around and still kind of helps me out when I have questions. We make parts for the race sprites especially and sell anything for a sprite or midget. And the reason you're here today is because you've been driving this sprite, your sprite, around the whole country. Yeah, just a little bit of it. We went from Cincinnati to Chicago, did all of Route 66, went up Route 1 in California, and I've been coming across 80 just to see you. Nice. <laughs> and so by the time you get back, which you should be back tomorrow, how many days have you been on the road? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, it looks like 24. Okay, good thing we have a helper behind the camera there. We're about 5,500 miles, we think. Do we want to bring her in for a second and introduce her? Hi. So this Hi. is this, this is, is your Nancy navigator, Bacon. right? She's been navigator and occasionally a driver. And she's also the shipping department for the Winter Circle. So you not only sell performance parts for Sprite race cars and people that want to drive a Sprite that works really well on the street, but you also make some parts yourself, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, like the front sway bars on here we made. Uh, the double bearing hubs that most mm -hmm. of the race guys use, we make. Uh, uprated front spindles, rear sway bars. There's probably 40, 50 different parts that you can only get from us. And I know back in the day, the catalog had all kinds of parts. And I think you've been working really hard to bring some of those parts back to the market that have been yes. gone for a long time. Yes, uh, especially as Dave got older and his son went on to other things. He started working less hard to get some of the parts coming back. We started doing some runs of the special oil pans we used to make. Uh, we're hoping to get some more of those going and just bringing more of the products back and started making a few products of our own. We make a bikini top for these and a Healy garage that covers the sprites. We're just trying to figure out what people need and what we like when we're on the road with them that works for us. How about the rear springs that have the cutouts? Is that something? That... I'm working on it. Okay. Uh, I've got a few sets. I've got the original drawings for them. I've talked to some companies about getting them done. So it's in the works. It just hasn't happened yet. Uh, if you want to go online, order any parts, uh, it's www.spridget.com, which is Sprite Midget Together. And when I was working to get my white bug-eyed Sprite that hadn't been run in 30 or 40 years, I called you up and I ordered a lot of parts to get this back on track. And that was actually the first time that I met you. I had this car up at Road America and yeah. you happened to be there. I think it was with this car as well, yes. wasn't it? And uh, yeah, he, he tries to make it to a lot of Sprite events and you even host uh, some Austin Healy Club events at your shop, don't you? Yeah, we have the club come by occasionally. Uh, they do Romeo lunches, which is retired old men eating out once a month every on Wednesdays. And when they're local to me, then they'll stop by the shop and look around for a little while. We help them keep their cars going. So I'm guessing that a lot of the people watching this at home would love to take a look at your car that you've just driven thousands of miles across the United States. Can we take a look at it? Sure, it's a little dirty. Uh, it's titled a 61, but it's a 60. Okay. Uh, it lost this probably 10 years ago, and we just never replaced it. These bugs are custom from the trip. It's got a 1275, a Datsun 5-speed. Uh, that's an inch and three-quarter carburetor. So uh, it's kind of interesting you got rid of the heater. You have like an ammo box there. The ammo box is full of my tools and some spare parts. Did, uh, you, did you run into any place where you had been wishing you still had a heater? We put a little electric heater in. Oh, okay. Um, this is the first time this car's ever had windows in it. We usually use a bikini top that has nothing around the sides or back, just a couple straps running down. And we used that when we were down, uh, down in the desert and that a lot because it keeps the shade but you get all the wind, so it helps a lot. But then coming up the coast back here, it got cold. So we put the windows back in, ran the little heater. 
which you can see inside if you want. Sitting up there on the hump, and you can unplug it, and we just stick it in the back. Uh, we added gauges. These are just held in with a magnet. This is also just held in with magnets. So you can take this whole assembly out and set that there if you want. Uh, this is an ammeter, and this is for an O2 sensor. So we blew up an engine once driving to Maine when it was running too lean. So I'm a little paranoid about running too lean now, so we can keep an eye on that. How much power does your electric heater take? Uh, it, if we turn it on without the engine running, it draws about 30 amps. It, and obviously you've upgraded your alternator to, to be able to handle all the power you need for this car? Yeah, I think our alternator puts out 60. It's just one I, years ago, happened to be going through a junkyard and saw a small alternator on a car. We took it off, fit it to this, and it's been working ever since. Have you converted to LED lights on this car at all? Uh, the brake lights are LED, everything else is not. Uh, it's complete custom wiring harness for it. Um, if you look up inside again, the there's relays here, there's a fuse block here, nothing's in there. Um, we can pull the dash out, and there's one connector that takes all the gauges out with it. Uh, we're working on making all the gauges electronic. Uh, right now, well, obviously the fuel gauge always is, the tack is on this. The speedometer is driven by a GPS unit and we're working on an electronic version of this. It'll be a split gauge that has both water and oil? Yeah, it'll be the factory face with needles just run by two servo motors. We just didn't get it done quite in time for the trip. Well, thanks for coming and stopping by and letting me share your car and your story with everyone at home. Uh, know you have a long way to go still and you'll be able to do 80 miles an hour in this car, right? Yeah, all day long. By the way, how much oil consumption have you seen on this trip? We started with a small leak, I noticed, a couple days before we left home, and it was too late to take it apart and maybe not get it back together if we found too much of a problem. Uh, while we did Route 66 and that, most of it wasn't that fast, so not a lot. As we've been coming across I-80 and running close to 80 most of the time, uh, we drive about six hours a day, and we've been losing about a quarter a day. Oh, and speaking of working on cars, you also run a shop where people can bring their British car to you and you'll fix it up for them, is that correct? Yes, it's Deb Vintage Motor Works. Uh, we did that before I took over the Winter Circle. It's been six, seven years now. Uh, we've got not quite as big of a space as Steve does here, but we've got a decent shop in Cincinnati, work on a lot of British cars for people or generally anything old. And if people want to get in contact with you about that, how do they do that? Uh, the easiest way is if you remember this website, there's a link to the other one. But it's www.debvm.com for Deb Vintage Motorworks. All right. Thanks for coming. Thanks. <laughs> How long are we doing this? An hour? <laughs> 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 you can't even lift your knees. <laughs>